everyone. Welcome back to our STEM subject series. I'm Abigail Rebolanam. To help and guide you towards your next step as being a grade 11 science, technology, engineering, and mathematics student. I'll be sharing with you some topics you might encounter towards this next step in different subject areas. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our video updates. And if you have not yet watched our previous video lectures, and for the next part of this presentation, just check the description below. So, let's start. Good day, everyone. So, today, I'll be sharing with you the topics for the subject Earth Science for Grade 11 STEM for the first semester as the part 3 of our video presentation. And this is all about the solar system as the continuation of our video presentation. If you have not yet watched our previous discussion, just check the description below where I discussed about interesting facts about the planets. So let's continue. You have here the picture of our solar system from the sun to the planets. You also have the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt. So, let's go first with the asteroid belt. This orbits around the terrestrial planets and it is a flat disk of rocky objects. It is full of remains from the solar system and the largest object here is Ceres. So, as we can see, the asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter. Now, what are some dwarf planets that can be seen in the Kuiper belt? We have here Pluto, Eris, Ceres, Haumea, and Makemake. Let's have some fun facts. So, Haumea has an oval-shaped size because it rotates very fast. So the question is, why is Pluto no longer a planet? So according to IAU or International Astronomical Union and AU or Astronomical Unit, there are three criteria for a celestial object to be called as a planet. So the first is it must be in orbit around the sun and it must have a sufficient mass to be spherical shape. And these two criteria were complied by Pluto. But on the third criteria, Pluto did not pass. That it must be big enough that its gravity cleared away any other objects of a similar size near its orbit around the sun. That's why it is no longer called a planet. Okay, so let's have another question. What keeps the asteroid belt in place? If you know the answer, you can try your guess and comment down below for five seconds. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. It's because of the gravitational force between the Sun and Jupiter. Next, we have the Kuiper belt or also known as icy Kuiper belt. This contains small icy objects which orbits around the Jovian planets at, as we can see in the picture. There are many dwarf, dwarf planets that can be seen here. As we can see in the picture, the Kuiper belt is at the rightmost part of this picture. Now, what is the difference between the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt? Do you have any idea or guess? Okay, so this is the answer. The asteroid belt, this contains silicates or rocks and metals that can be seen here, as we can see in the picture. Some silicate mineral examples and the asteroid belt itself. 
and for the hyper belt, it is larger and more massive and various ices can be seen here as we can also see in the picture below. Next, we have the Oort cloud or collection of icy debris. And this is the edge of the solar system. Next, we have asteroids. These are star-like solid pieces of rocks and metals. Next, we have the difference between meteoroid and meteor. Meteoroid, it is a debris or remains in the solar system or outer space. And it will be called as meteor if the debris enters the Earth's atmosphere. Next, we have the meteorite and meteor showers. Meteorite, these are solid pieces of debris that fell at the ground. While meteor showers are meteors caused by streams of cosmic debris. Let's have some fun fact again. What is the difference between meteoroids and asteroids? Meteoroids are debris or objects from asteroids, while asteroids came from moving objects in the outer space. Now for comets, these are also known as dirty snowballs and they are made of ice and rock. Next we have the moon or the celestial object that orbits around a planet. That's why it is called as our natural satellite or the Earth's natural satellite. Next, we have the star or huge celestial body that is made up of hydrogen and helium. That's why it can give light and heat. Another question, how do black holes are formed? Did you ever come up to this question? The ho the answer for this question is that when a massive star runs out of nuclear fuel, it can no longer sustain its own weight and begins to collapse. As we can see in the picture, the black hole and an example of a massive star. Massive star. Her workmanship is marvelous. How will I know it? From Psalm 3914. Thank you for listening. I hope this presentation helped you. See you on our next video. Thank you and God bless. See the description below for more videos. Remember to like, subscribe, and share.